Marcos, wake up! Can you hear the gunshots? There are gunshots and flames! Listen! Did you hear that? What's happening? You said there were strangers here yesterday and the Gonzaleses left town. Is this a part of this? Why did they leave? What do we do? I am afraid for the children. The sounds are closer than the fort. They are just up the road. Look out the window. There are houses on fire. Look at the horsemen. What is happening? We have to take cover. Bring your rifle. Where do we hide? Oh my God, don't go outside. Shut the door. There are bandidos everywhere. Everybody, quickly, get to our bedroom. Get on the floor. We are being attacked by bandidos. We must hide. Papa will protect us. I don't know who they are. It's too dark to see outside, but there are many of them. Marcos, why did the Gonzaleses say they were leaving? Why would Pancho Villa come over here? Why is the fort so important to him? Don't go outside. What can you see? Are the banditos fighting with the soldiers? How many bodies can you see? Are the banditos or soldiers? Why would they attack us if they wanted to battle with the cavalry? We had been traveling for many days. General Villa had told us it was hatred for the Americans because of the way they were controlling our Mexican leader, Carranza. General Villa is a very passionate man, even with his countrymen. He once told me, Pablo Lopez, do not betray me or you will pay the price. Even though I'm a general in the, in the Villistas, he could not see my loyalty to him at the time. As it drew closer, day by day, the Palomas and Columbus, we sent out scouting parties to determine the strength of the American army camp. They called it Camp Furlong. We began our planning. We had several targets. We wanted to destroy the military camp. We wanted to destroy the town, and in particular the store owned by a man named Sam Ravel, who had cheated us with the purchases of munitions. We wanted to destroy those who had conspired against us. We knew the officers of the American Army lived in town, so we planned to target the hotel named the Ricci Hotel. We divided our forces into three groups to attack each side of the camp, Furlong and the town. We knew of an arroyo which could give us cover we approached, as we approached our targets. General Villa posted himself on high ground from which he could observe the attack and send directions we needed. Along with Colonel Boltran and Colonel Cervantes, we made our attack on the camp and the town before dawn to launch our surprise attack. We struck from the east and the west. The plan included scattering the cavalry horses, the weapons, building, and the food supplies. Our initial attack was successful as we killed the military guards and advanced our targets in the dark. Encouraged by General Villa, we doused the town in kerosene and set it ablaze. We encountered gunfire at the camp and we unsettled as they opened with fire with the machine guns. Many of our troops were struck down. In half an hour we forced to withdraw and found later the American troops spread into town and began killing our men. They sent us into withdrawal. We moved back across the border but were pursued by their soldiers. We were in disarray. They continued their counterattack and we lost many vistas. Naming a state park after Pancho Villa 
a one-time enemy in 1959 has raised many eyebrows and in some cases resentment. Relatives of those slain by the Viistas state that this was unacceptable, yet to this day the force contingent makes a procession from Mexico into the U.S. in memory and tolerance of the event. This celebration is known as the Cabogata and happens each year on a day close to the raid by Pancho Villa. Memories are stirred, but the essence of the ride is one of peace and reconciliation. The story continues.